Welcome to this series of classes by Dr. Johnson C. Philip. He is a foremost Christian apologist and Bible expositor with a worldwide demand. Please press the subscribe button below this video and then please click the bell icon near it. This will ensure that you never miss any valuable video of Dr. Philip. God bless you. Let's go to our study of biblical, a study of bibliology. Let me begin with uh, an experience. Many, many years ago, there was, uh, there was a sudden fire in a corner of the house in which we were living by rent, living on rent. Um, I'm talking about 1960s when cooking gas was not common in India, firewood and kerosene oil were common and somebody had stocked firewood in a corner of that uh, very big compound. Somehow there was a fire. Fortunately, we had a, a flexible pipe and water was coming at full force so i just lifted the pipe and started pouring water this was my first experience of seeing an uncontrolled fire and this was my first experience of quenching it so what i was doing is fire was rising like this and since water was coming with full force I was pouring water at the top of the fire, late 60s. Suddenly my uncle, he came and he came running and said, Hey, kid, what are you doing? I said, I'm pouring water and trying to suppress it. He said, if you're pouring it at the top, you're only suppressing the fire. You have to pour it to the bottom where there is firewood which is burning. You have to destroy it at the root. Otherwise, you will suppress fire, but you will not quench it. There is a vast difference between these two. Suppressing the fire and quenching. You can suppress it, but as long as the firewood is there, it will keep on burning. And you will waste a lot, lot of water and lot many hours trying to put out the water. A similar thing has happened in the Christian world. Here, when it comes to the Bible, we discuss a lot of peripheral subjects. Peripheral means they are subjects, but they are of no core value or core importance. At the same time, somebody is pouring water to the root of our faith and destroying the fire of faith. These are the theological radicals who have their origin in Germany in 1700s, who trained thousands upon thousands of people in their radical theology, free of cost, and sent them to India. And all these years, these people have been attacking the roots while we are quenching, we are pouring water on the flame. Under their influence, lot of wrong ideas have come to the Christian faith. For example, this idea that there was one committee here, there was one committee here, and they decided which books are to be chosen to be in a chosen as part of the canon. As I reminded you last week, this is not the way things have happened. As each book was written, the writer and also the priests and prophets with him in the Old Testament and the apostles in the New Testament 
they understood that these are verbally inspired books they understood that these are parts of the canon and they just recognized them as canon in the old testament the lord had given a command the original copy of the canon is to be preserved but at the same time there was a command that you have to memorize it and uh, because of the, to fulfill these two commands the original was preserved whereas for memorizing people made copies and since their number was in millions thousands upon thousands of copies were made last week uh, there was a very interesting question about it and uh, i am very happy that uh, one of the persons who attends these classes regularly dr joyma she cited a number of verses i was away from computer and i was unable to look at my notes because notes are on computer and uh, uh, i don't use a mobile as a computer but promptly she posted all the verses which were relevant and i felt so happy that even busy people who are attending these classes they are studying the subject seriously she cited all the verses that showed clearly that the word of god was to be preserved i commend you for that doctor and i want to tell everyone please remember god had laid protocols in the old testament itself for recognition and preservation of the canon as a result when the new testament was written copies made were made immediately the first five the first book of new testament is the gospel of matthew the last is revelation mark was not the first gospel please remember this whole idea that mark was uh, the first is an idea of german radicals who want to tell you that mark wrote and he was not an eye witness matthew copied from him and expanded it luke copied and expanded it so neither matthew nor mark nor luke is reliable this is what they want to prove this is wrong matthew was the first to be written matthew mark luke all of them were eye witnesses john was an eye witness and john wrote the gospel of john and also the last book of the bible revelation before ad 70 all of you have been given to believe that john uh, revelation was written ad 95 that is absolutely a bogus theory propounded by theological radicals who don't believe that bible is the word of god time has come for bible believing people to take a strong stand and claim that matthew was the first gospel to be written matthew mark luke and john were eye witnesses and that book of revelation was written before ad 70 because in ad 70 the temple at uh, jerusalem was destroyed by titus and his forces and after that christians had to flee all that area when i say this a lot of people come and ask brother johnson what is the proof that matthew was the first gospel beautiful question if somebody asks you that question don't be an idiot to give an answer we christians we have been foolish for a long period of time they try to trap us and we easily fall into the trap of all these uh, theological radicals you ask them back in your opinion which is the first book they will say mark and you ask what is the proof well they may say everybody claims you tell them everybody claims is not a proof that mark was really the first gospel everybody claims is only a proof that everybody claims but everybody claims is not a proof so you go find out a if you feel that matthew was not the first gospel you go find out bring proof that mark was the first 
and when you bring proof i will show you that matthews was the first to be written and i want to assure you in historical literature there is no evidence that mark, mark was the first in historical literature there is no evidence that john the, the book of revelation was produced in ad 95 in fact all the historical information points out to the fact that the entire new testament was written and completed before ad 70 and if there is anyone here who wants to challenge me you are welcome to challenge me but one thing you have to prove you bring the proof and the ball is in your court and then we will go further oh you may say brother but uh, everybody believes that everybody may be believing that but just because everybody believes it doesn't mean that it is true keep that in mind and when somebody attacks the bible tomorrow be a man not a coward and start with a counter attack let them bring those who attack the bible let them bring the proof first we don't have to do it okay then as we go further we notice many developments and that development is the spread of the manuscript and the spread of biblical manuscripts started in bc 1000 in bc approximately around bc 1000 i hope you remember solomon's people went on ships to bring wood gold silver spices and surprisingly two more things check in the old testament apes yeah those large monkeys apes and peacocks apes were picked up from africa peacocks were picked up from india what about spices it is now that a few western countries through tissue culture and other things have started producing spices otherwise from bc 3000 onwards india was the center of spices so much so that the black pepper which is produced in kerala it was known worldwide as black gold because black pepper was very popular in middle east and the people of kerala the the entire business of black pepper in kerala was controlled by christians and christians were very cunning uh, at that time christians were very cunning in business so when romans would come on uh, come on ships and they would come very close to my place known as kodungallur it's only about uh, 400 years ago that there was an earthquake and ships stopped coming up to kodungallur it's hardly 50 kilometers from this place roman ships were coming up to this place to buy black pepper and keralites kerala christians were so cunning they would accept the payment only in 24 karat gold that much for background so solomon's ships were coming to collect spices and peacocks from kerala at that time kerala had plenty of peacock they went out of exist, uh, existence because of the non vegetarian habits of keralites but now they are making a comeback when people started coming from israel up to kerala they started bringing copies of the bible old testament with them and many of them settled here to establish their business outposts and people who settled here they established synagogues it is estimated that there were more than half a dozen synagogues throughout india 
and every synagogue had a minimum of one copy of Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible. So the Bible came to India in 1000 BC. And eventually when the Jews abandoned their language and they started speaking Greek, they started bringing other kinds of manuscripts to Kerala. And since they had business throughout India, they took these manuscripts all over India. So copies of the Bible started coming to India from 1000 BC. One of the places where copies came is this place, Kochi. Kochi is the name of uh, uh, a city known as Ernakulam and also an island known as Kochin. All of them together are known as Kochi. In that island area, there is a synagogue known as the Mattacheri Jewish Synagogue. That synagogue has a handwritten copy of Pentateuch, maybe a hundred kilogram or more than that, just the five books of the Bible. How did a synagogue come into existence there? Because the Jews are very good businessmen and they established business centers here in Kerala for procuring spices. They established their own synagogue and they had copies of the scripture with them because of god's commandment or because of god's instruction in the old testament to preserve the original and make copies copying the old testament became widespread and once the new testament came copying became much more common and Christians, the Christian church came in an era when writing material became abundant and cheap. Leather was in abundance among Jews, but leather was not cheap. Leather needs processing, which is labor intensive and therefore costly. But with the spread of the Greek civilization, spread another thing, and that is a writing material known as papyrus. Papyrus is kind of a long stemmed plant with very long leaves. People of Kerala have seen, um, it's no longer there, but people of Kerala, they have seen ordinary pie, metta pie. They were made from these long reeds. Pe Papyrus was a similar plant. Those who are outside Kerala, they have not seen this plant, but uh, uh, many of you have seen pineapple plant. Pineapple plants have long leaves. Now assume a pineapple plant with five feet of uh, stem and then long leaves like pineapple plants. I have seen that kind of plants uh, occasionally in Tamil Nadu and many a times in Andhra Pradesh, but not north of them. I mean the long stemmed plant. But in North India, many of you have seen pineapple plants. They have long leaves. So these leaves, papyrus tree, paper, uh, papyrus plants, these uh, um, leaves were thick. And using very fine blade-like knife, they would cut them from middle. And that would, and the middle portion would be uh, exuding a kind of paste and they would then take these uh, split leaves and weave them the way clothes are woven once they are woven they are 
sun dried and after sun drying them they would use a very fine clay spread a very thin very very thin layer over it and using a smooth stone they would the way clothes are ironed they would iron and uh, then they would dry it that is papyrus it was far more cheaper probably a thousand times cheaper than leather and papyrus became a material of writing when the christian church came into existence and the word paper comes from papyrus so once the church came into existence christians became writing rapidly writing was an addiction for the christian church and we have plenty of evidence inside the bible now last two classes or last three four classes i have repeatedly mentioned that there is a lot of evidence for the way bible was written the way it was copied the way it was preserved there is a lot of evidence inside the bible but unfortunately under the influence of theological radicals who are not even christians we overlook all this evidence now here is my latest claim for which i will give you just one verse the remaining verses you can uh, search and i am sure that uh, very devout devoted students like dr joy m are listening and that within a week you might be able to post a few verses in brethren theological institute whatsapp group and let me add if there is anyone here who is not a member of the brethren theological institute group you are missing something seriously recently we have started some serious discussion and uh, dr k epen has posted some very interesting questions which led to several rounds of several rounds of discussion there if you are not a member of that group please write to me please send a, a whatsapp message to me i will add you dr sanishri and would you please do me a favor uh, of posting my mobile number in the comment box so please pick up my mobile number from the comment box write to me i will add you to bta group and please remember this is only the beginning of discussion we are going to discuss a lot of things lord willing and all of you would be profited so my claim is is this once the christian church came into existence people were already addicted to writing and they wrote so much about lord jesus christ his disciples their teaching and everything that is is unbelievable example luke chapter 1 verse 2 luke chapter 1 verse 2 um unfortunately i did not write it uh, in front in my notes in english let me read now from english it says uh, let us read verses 1 and 2 luke's gospel chapter 1 verses 1 and 2 many have undertaken to write an account of the things that have been fulfilled among us now please notice many it is not one or two people many have undertaken to write an account write a history write details of the things that have been fulfilled among us or fulfilled can also be translated as which have taken place among us and then it says they were handed down to us now these things cannot be handed down without making copy they were handed down to us by those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and servants of the word obviously luke's gospel 
chapter 1 verses 1 and 2 give us and thank you brother mithun for posting uh, references in the background yeah please post only the references not the full verses because i want everyone to go back to their bible and read the full verse and confirm to themselves that what i said was right so look at this from the beginning the eyewitnesses they wrote and then they passed on so how many eyewitnesses were there we know that jesus had uh, 12 close disciples one of whom perished he also must have written something he was an accountant so even to keep a false account he had to keep account books and who who knows whether he wrote a lot more than that but other eyewitnesses wrote about lord jesus how many eyewitnesses were there thousands how many of them were close to lord jesus the 11 who did not betray they were close 70 whom lord jesus sent to preach so that makes uh, 81 people and then 120 are mentioned in acts that itself would be 200 people who were close to lord jesus but the actual number of eyewitnesses is far large and when we look into available oral and written history inside the bible and outside the bible it becomes very clear that there were tens of thousands of eyewitnesses and the scripture very clearly says here that many 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 of those eyewitnesses they wrote account writing an account means writing an entire history and also details of what lord jesus taught and they were passed on to us which means copies were made and by the time luke was about to write that would be approximately around 40 a.d matthew was written in 35 a.d within 35 to 40 numerous books came into existence and luke says that so many people have written now let me pick up all of them sift and sort through them and then write out write down a common a, a history that is fully reliable what did luke mean by comparing and writing in a court of law if a dozen witnesses stand up and narrate the story there will always be some differences in jurisprudence the science of examining what is true and what is false it is understood that when humans narrate something there will be differences but when you listen to all of them then there will be many elements which are common to all of them because all of them remember those things accurately that is exactly what luke means he will compare everything he will check which information information is reliable and if needed he will uh, cross check with people who know and then write so just imagine this habit of writing produced or it gave rise to at least one writer whom the holy spirit used to give an elaborate account of the life of lord jesus to give us scriptures god used a variety of people a variety of approaches since luke was a medical doctor he was in the habit of carefully looking at everything 
and my do my son is a physician i often spend time with him discussing medical practice just as a scientific curiosity he was telling me about one of the physicians or was it surgeons who would place his palm on a person's stomach and say hey look at this and all the other medical doctors with him medical students with him they would place their palm they if they had a hundred palms they would place it there would not find it but then would desire to have that expertise and why does he have that expertise practice observation practice observation more practice observation luke was a physician surgeons did not exist at that time except in india we indians had surgeons even at the time of uh, lord jesus christ and lot of surgical equipment has been uh, uh, identified so a medical doctor who is trained in careful observation that is why i gave the example of this medical doctor he is able to he or she is able to see things which others are not able to spot god the holy spirit chose four people to write the life history of christ and all four had four different qualifications and one was a physician which means he would make accurate observation he made accurate observation and one of the observations he wrote under the guidance of the holy spirit was the fact that a lot of people have written and also that they were distributed widely so please remember today when some muslim comes and says hey everything has been corrupted you don't have anything reliable don't be a sucker don't just fall into their trap we christians have been suckers for last 300 years just believing anything and everything which a dick tom harry speaks against the reliability of the canon don't do that ask them to state their case ask them to prove their case and here from the bible itself i have given you two verses which show that when the church started people were in the habit of writing 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 copying copying distributing so please remember copying of the old testament copying of the new testament was a fairly widespread practice and since it was a fairly wide widespread practice within the first generation hundreds of thousands of copies were made in greek hebrew latin and numerous other languages some of which i will mention the languages in which the bible was translated from the first century onwards include the syriac language suriani latin coptic armenian i already gave you this list palestinian georgian arabic nubian persian gothic slavonic numerous other languages not only that god gave another gift to mankind in genesis when god said be fruitful multiply and subdue the earth that was a command to develop technology and man has been developing technology from the beginning 
they made clay tablets which have survived till today then they made leather scrolls which survive even today then they made papyrus they survive even up to today and then came a very important technological breakthrough or uh, subduing the earth they discovered a very thin kind of leather very very thin kind of leather known as vellum before that leather used to be very thick but once vellum came into existence it became amazingly thin all of you have seen drums use, used in music those drums of course now synth synthetic material is being used in many places but i am sure that you have seen tabla i am sure you have seen the older bongo drums congo drums drums used in temple or what is in hindi known as mridang or what is known as nagada they all use leather very thin leather that was invented approximately around the time that church came into existence and somebody said hey this leather is so thin that we don't have to make rolls we will cut them into sheets and then we will bind the sheet sheets on one side that is how books came into existence books did not ex exist before the arrival of thin vellum and now something that needed so much space was compacted in a little space in the name of books those books were and even today they are known as codex plural codices or codices once codex came into existence books became compact and there was suddenly another development leather scrolls they were able to write only on one side codices they could write on both sides of the leather so just imagine when scrolls were changed into codices the weight reduced much and when they started writing on both sides of the codices the weight became even smaller that gave rise to a very big missionary enterprise where people started copying books of the bible and sending them or taking the taking these codices with them worldwide worldwide it was amazing now it had become possible to produce carryable editions of the bible big scrolls were not needed wheels were not needed to sort of uh, roll them god gave technology appropriate for the spread of the scripture paper did not exist at that time but around ad 170 they invented paper in china after papyrus these were known as paper and chinese people started selling paper worldwide 
they had a monopoly over paper and they never revealed the secret to anyone but uh, <laughs> you cannot keep a secret forever they were using wood pulp and silk for making paper handmade paper and very soon people from around the world spice from around the world went to china they found out the secret pulp of softwood and silk mixed with each other and they smuggled silk worms from china to middle east please remember smuggling silk worm from china to any other country was punished by death if you were caught you were immediately executed and a lot of people it seems a lot of people were executed but finally some people were able to smuggle silk worms to middle east and finally they started manufacturing paper in middle east once paper came into existence dye based print, uh, printing became common by dye based printing what i mean is we all have seen seal which we put on paper on a seal your name and your address is written in reverse once it is written in reverse carefully then you can produce hundreds thousands tens of thousands of copies they found out that if you take a large piece of wood and use a very sharp instrument to carve the reverse of a paper or reverse of a of a handwritten manuscript then that large wooden block can be used to print thousands upon thousands of copies the harder the wood the more it would last so by 200 300 and 400 centuries they started copying bibles using the method of wooden block wooden block printing exists even today in north india a lot of these handmade clothing which you get from rajasthan and also from haryana they have very peculiar designs actually these designs are made by using wooden blocks and in north india these wooden blocks are known as thappa and in hindi putting a seal is known as thappa lagana so using wooden blocks they started making copies of the bible there was only one problem if one letter somewhere becomes wrong if you spot it while you are etching it you could solve it but after a whole page was made if you find a mistake that mistake had to be carried you could not do much of course they found out solutions later but it was a very tiresome and troublesome job but look at how god used technology to spread the word of god worldwide once again i want to tell you many of you think that bibles were not available in ancient times that is a terrible misinformation bibles were available in plenty they were not cheap like the way they are today but they were available at reasonable cost the distribution of the bible was finally stopped by the roman catholic church 
eventually roman catholic church came into control of almost all the world including india today there are lots of uh, anti national people among us christians who sings glories of the british empire the british empire please remember the british empire was made up of roman catholics they did not come to india to spread the gospel they came to india to plunder this nation hindi the correct word for them is lutere they were plunderers and using terrible force they converted a lot of indians into roman catholicism in goa they murdered tens of thousands of hindus when they did not convert to the christian faith oh you may say brother johnson are you saying this in public brothers and sisters this is all public knowledge only we christians are like the cat uh, like the dove which closes the eye it's all there in secular records that when the roman catholic portuguese came to goa they murdered tens of thousands of hindus who did not accept the christian faith so they did not come to india to spread the gospel they came for plunder and also con for converting people into their version of religion and for roman catholics reading the bible was forbidden let me repeat it many of us are so ignorant about the real history of christianity particularly from the time of reformation 500 years ago the roman catholic church forbade it for catholics to have bible i have seen people who have gone into roman catholic seminaries and studied for five to seven years without ever opening the bible i am not going into details now but just let me tell you if you think that bibles were not available and that is why the bible societies had to come into existence you should also know the reason translation printing and sales of the bible was made a criminal activity in all those nations which were controlled by the roman catholics and that includes india and in my childhood i have seen roman catholics when you offer them a new testament they would say no 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 as though you have offered them a cobra and when you ask why in the world would you refuse a new testament they would say if our priest find out priest finds out that we brought a bible into our home we would face terrible punishment so because of all this and because many of us don't know that this bible was suppressed by roman catholics and that's why it was not available in india or worldwide because almost the whole world was under the control of roman catholics through various nations therefore many don't know that bibles were available in plenty the arrival of uh, papyrus the arrival of paper and the arrival of uh, wooden block printing made bibles easily available then with that i will be stopping then a great man by the name of johannes gutenberg invented the metal movable type printing press and with that the mission center price spread but when johannes gutenberg invented the metal movable type printing press almost the whole world was under the control of 
one or other roman catholic ruler and printing publishing distribution of the bible in those nations was forbidden that is why bible societies had to come into existence we will go into all that later uh, when the appropriate time comes but today i want to close with this reminder that to get bibles into your hands and my hands and just as our brother adai prayed which deeply touched me that we have as many as half a dozen or more bibles in our homes and a bible teacher like i i have countless number of bibles in my home that's all because to bring canon to us god enabled man to use technology today you and i have bibles because also because a lot of people paid a cost therefore brothers and sisters don't be cowards particularly when you defend the bible don't be a coward somebody comes and says that uh, oh we just don't know don't go back into your shell you ask him how do you know that you don't know start asking and then you will realize that there is a lot of misinformation i thank god for giving us this kind of an opportunity to discuss these things related to the canon dear friends i am confident that you enjoyed listening to this question answer video by dr johnson c philip He would love to get your questions. Please post your questions in the comment box below this video and he will prepare a video reply for you. Please post only one question at a time and make it as detailed as possible so that Dr. Philip has no problem in understanding exactly what you mean. Also, please encourage this ministry by subscribing to this channel. Below this video, there is a subscribe button. Please click it. Also, please click the bell icon near it to complete the process of subscribing. Thank you very much for being such an encouragement to our channel.